know, the reason we got into engineering in the first place is because we really want to get out there and help people and make the world a better place. When I came to college, I was really interested in helping people and getting involved with something that would help me do that. Um, so when I learned about Engineers Without Borders, it was a clear choice for me because I could combine my major with my passion. I was interested in finding a group of like-minded individuals who wanted to go and actually implement uh, a technology and implement it for people who, who really, who really need it. The Engineers Without Borders is a humanitarian organization dedicated to improving quality of life in developing countries through sustainable, resource, uh, through sustainable resources and through community-driven projects. And the communities decide what sort of projects they need implemented and the engineers do their best to support those needs. When we traveled to Madagascar, we got to experience you know, some of the poorest living conditions in the world and that was just really kind of an eye-opener for me. And it's something that's hard to get out of your head once you've seen it every time I turn on a hot faucet or turn on a stove. It's, it really hits you that a lot of people in the world don't have that. Madagascar is a large island. It's about the size of California, and it's off the east coast of the African continent. And it's a really great place with lots of biodiversity, and it's the only home to many different types of animals that are not found anywhere else in the world. In our community in Madagascar, we've made a positive impact through the various projects that we're working on. Uh, the biosand water filters are helping to bring cleaner water to the residents while the solar team is working to bring electricity to the schools. None of the schools really have access to lights um, or any kind of electricity at all. Um, so that's what we've really tried to go out and do is provide lighting um, so that the, the kids have an opportunity to study um, at night as well as so that the community can offer adult education classes to improve literacy rates that are very low in the community. For our solar project in Kinjavatu, we have the goal of installing lights at seven primary schools. To begin this project, we collected weather data and measured the dimensions of each school building. With this data, we worked at UNL during the school year on a design to provide lights for a classroom at each school. We even built a prototype design in a lab at the university to ensure we could build it properly in Madagascar. We returned to Madagascar the next year and installed the solar panels and lights in a school classroom. We included a lot of monitoring equipment in our design so we could learn how well the system works. We're excited to return to Madagascar and work with the teachers and students to install systems at two more schools. We got involved in Kinjivatu because they have unsanitary water conditions. Um, they don't have any sort of sanitation infrastructure and therefore there is fecal matter and a number of other pathogens in their water sources. To improve drinking water quality in Kinjavatu, we researched a lot of different technologies and decided to work with a biosand filter. This is a very simple, low-cost technology that can be placed in people's homes to treat water. Prior to installing them, we worked at UNL to test different designs. Since the biosand filter was new to Kinjavatu, we decided to first install it at schools to provide clean drinking water to students during the school day. We hosted a workshop to teach the community members and teachers how to construct and operate the filters. So far, we've installed 12 biosand filters. The community has embraced this technology and decided to form a committee to begin producing additional filters. We're happy to have provided Kinjavatu with resources to make their drinking water safer. We've given them the tools to create clean water sources. We've worked with them to provide solar power in the schools so the children are able to study. It really opened my eyes to how real people's struggles are and that people really don't have clean water or power. It really changed the way that I view my own country and, and myself and my day-to-day -day activities. And it has really made engineering real to me. Um, before I got involved, engineering was just very theoretical. I had never done any design work, I had never done anything more than just math problems. Engineers Without Borders has allowed me to do design work. And, and going through and, and taking a pretty much a full engineering problem from start to finish. I think I'm much more willing to be creative as an engineer, um, to go out and look for these sustainable solutions. It's just been, it's been life changing. Expanding what I saw as the, the potential limits of what an engineer can do and actually allowing me to realize that I can use what I'm learning as an engineer 
to go out and actually help people. We're engineers making a world of difference. I've learned that engineers have the power to shape um, the future of a community. That I realize that the world is a lot bigger than myself. We are Nebraska engineers. And, and we make a world of difference. difference.